everybody. What is up? Welcome to Adobe Live. Um, happy Friday. If we're just meeting, I am your host for today. Uh, my name is Katrina Tarijas, and I am the Creative Cloud Express evangelist. And I am also a content uh, creator on YouTube and a Twitch streamer on the side. How's everyone doing today? I see so many people in chat. Hello, Robert. Hi, Steve. Hi, Cody. How's it going? Hi, Sean. Hi, Bliss. It's so nice to see you all today. How's your Friday going? How's your week? What did you accomplish this week? Let me know in chat. I would love to hear about it. And we're also, what are, what are your weekend plans? I'd love to know. Okay, so for today's masterclass, we will be tackling the world of photography and photo editing in Creative Cloud Express. So we'll be covering things like the image quick actions, as well as like how to enhance your photos, how to make like basic edits, like adjusting the lighting, contrast, all that stuff, um, how to add filters, how to use the blend modes, and how to utilize like overlays and textures to just really make your photos pop even more. Oh, and um, I have a special exercise at the end for <laughs> making um, collages and like photo composites and stuff. Um, so yes, with that, we have a jam packed session ahead of us. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are on the screen. Y'all know Creative Cloud Express homepage where we always start. So today we're gonna actually start off with quick actions because I feel like they're just super easy to get through and explain and you know we're just gonna fly through these. So on the homepage we have all the quick actions here but if you click on the image tab, uh, we have like resize image, remove background, convert to JPG, convert to PNG, and crop image. So for today, um, we are going to skip the convert to JPG and convert to PNG because really you're just uploading a file and then it converts it to another, um, you know, the other format, PNG or JPG. And it's like, you know, <laughs> it's not really much to show. It kind of speaks for itself. But So we're going to focus on the crop image, resize, and remove background. Um, let's see. Hello, everyone. Um, happy Masterclass Friday. Hi, Anika. Nice Meg Lewis in the back. Yes, I have Meg Lewis back here. This is her Miss Lisa print. Um, and yes, <laughs> she was such. She was uh, a guest on a show that I did. Um, the round one at the back of the wall. Which one? Oh, the light. This is a, a live light thingy but i'm so glad you like the background i worked really hard on it <laughs> my stream background has gone through so many iterations and stuff um but yes okay cool everyone is chilling okay awesome so on to the quick actions so first we're gonna look at resize image so once you click on the resize image it just says like drag and drop an image um, let's go with, um, let's just do the sample image for today. I won't have y'all wait for <laughs> me to, um, load my own stuff from the desktop. Okay. So we have this image. Oh, such good quality images. Um, so for the resize, basically it just allows you to resize your image for like any platform. So we have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, all that stuff. Um, and there's also a custom size as well. Um, and then the thing with um, the resize image where it's useful is, you know, have you ever run into those instances where you have, um, you try and upload like an Instagram image? Yeah, it's square, like one by one, uh, one to one ratio, but <laughs> you upload it and it's so big. The file size is so big. <laughs> that the you know uh, I don't think Instagram would do this but like some uploaders will be like oh my god your image is too big so this is kind of like a great way to just make sure you have the right dimensions whether in, uh, I think this is pixels yes in pixels um, so that you don't run into that issue so we can crop it to a square landscape story it's just so easy and you can also scale the image too so you can like zoom in and out and it works pretty well super simple so if you ever have an image um, or really an image file that you want to like resize, um, this is the great, this is a great way to do it. And then once it's done, we have the one-to-one. -one. Once you hit, oh, this is upload. 
oh i guess i need to have my own image okay <laughs> so wait let's let's do this logo here um so let's do that now it says download okay like that makes sense using a sample image they don't want you to like download it without licensing makes sense okay so we have it in a square or we could do a widescreen and then you hit download and it's super easy it saves boom there you go quick action <laughs> resizing in seconds um Great work with DCC. Yes, Wade. Yes. No green screen needed. Yes. No green screen needed. Love that. Love that. Okay, cool. So the next quick action we're going to go over is remove background. So this one is pretty self-explanatory as well. Um, so let's see. Let's browse on my... I actually don't know what images I have in here. Um, photos. Is it this one? Should I do this one? Portfolio. I really should have. I usually pull. Oh, headshots. Here we go. Instagram photo. Profile pic. Actually, don't know. I should have preloaded this. This was my mistake, y'all. I did not preload any of these images on my desktop. Whoops. Okay. So we'll just work with the sample image just to show you how it works. And so removing background, you upload a photo. So one tip for removing background is... I found that the tool works best if you have if there's a clear distinction between the background and the subject. So having something like a clean like blank wall behind you or um, having like a really what's it called a really distinct like um, between like the how do I say this like the you know when the background is kind of blurry, you know, the depth of field <laughs> is um really prominent i find that that's when the tool works best otherwise like you know the tool can sometimes get confused with like what to crop out or something like if we were to crop this box right here there we'd probably get the chair because my hair is really close to the chair color um so that's um yeah so make sure you have like a nice distinct background um so yeah but otherwise if the tool does mess up there are like things to we, uh, we do have you know, the refined cutout tool and all that stuff. So we have options. So once it removes the background, um, usually this will say download. And like we saw earlier, it just downloaded the image. Easy. And then now for the newest quick action, which is crop image, um, uh, we'll just use the sample image again. Um, for this one, this is like a free form crop tool. So really you could crop it to any dimension that you want. So it's similar to resize, but this one is just more like free flowing. You can just grab this box right here and then just crop the image manually yourself, which is really cool. And I love that the movement is really fluid and super easy to work with. And then once it's done, pretend this, is, this says download, hit the download button and then you're good to go. And boom, there you go, quick actions. <laughs> See, super easy, very self-explanatory. Um, highly recommend you check these out if you haven't done so already. Um, okay, so now we're going to go into the photo editing part of today's class. So we are going to go ahead and let's do Instagram posts. We'll start from scratch. Um, and then we're going to just resize it to the Instagram portrait size. And then we're going to bring in a photo from my Lightroom uh, where I put everything <laughs> all of my photos um so we have this and then we'll work with this image today cool so this photo was taken about two years ago this never made it to the gram so y'all getting exclusive content here um we're just going to add it to the background that's totally fine um, barely an inconvenience. Yes, yes, for sure, General Kenobi. Okay, um, so now um, for to edit photos, like this is completely unedited. Um, and so if you don't have Lightroom or Photoshop or if you're not using like any other photo editing tool, you can make light adjustments um, in Creative Cloud Express that I find that I find gets the job done. So um, once you, so first, Click on the photo and then we are going to go to the enhancements tab under the effects um, panel. So 
um, here it opens up this menu and it automatically applies contrast for, I don't know why, but just set it to zero. So it says we'll start from this baseline right here or close to zero, whatever. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is add some brightness to the photo. It's really dark. The photo or the colors are really dull in my opinion. And there's a little bit of like the lens warping here, but that's something we'll have to fix in Lightroom. Um, but it'd be really cool if we had that here, like have lens correction, that would be awesome. Okay, so we're going to adjust the brightness just by sliding this tool or this notch right here. What is this called? A notch, a switch? I'm not sure. So we're just gonna brighten it up a little bit and then I'll zoom in on the photo a little bit so y'all can see better. Um, so it's brightened. We're gonna add a little bit of contrast. And this is kind of like my go-to recipe for editing my photos, whether it's in Lightroom or um, in Creative Cloud Express. Um, we're going to add a little bit of saturation. Um, usually I don't apply saturation to my photos, but I found this one is really nice. I usually um, increase the vibrancy versus saturation, but this one I feel like this uh, color boost is really subtle, which is really nice. And also 10 points to anyone in chat who can guess where this location is. It's a pretty famous wall. Um, here's a hint, in California. <laughs> and then highlight. Um, for highlights, this brings up the high points, like in the, oh, sorry, this brings up the high points in the photo. So like, um, What's it called? The kind of like the lightest parts, like like the highlight on the cheekbones. You see, like think about it like that. Um, so to increase it, it'll look like this. It just brings more light to the photo, and then um, you can decrease it for um, what's it called to just bring down the highlights a bit if they're coming off a little too strong. In this case, we'll bring it down a little bit to like thirty. Yeah, and then for the shadows, it. Uh, this adjusts the shadow, so we'll just slide it. So you could see like the the changes are really subtle, which is nice because you don't have to worry about, you know, the tool going like zero to a hundred really fast, even though you're only on like a level five. I know a lot of photo editing tools. I get a little like hesitant <laughs> if there's photo editing in like um, a design tool because sometimes, you know, it's made for designing and making graphics and stuff, not so much photo, edit photo editing. So I do, uh, I do like err on the cautious side, but I've been presently, ple presently, pleasantly surprised by this. Um, and then now we're gonna adjust the warmth. So as you can see, the photo is a bit yellow. Um, so to counter act, to counter that, um, I bring the warmth down so that it's a bit more cool tone and it just evens out a little bit just before like if you the more you bring it down the more the blues show up um so i just like it so it barely starts to show the blue tones like that nice hi ronald welcome to the stream okay and then we're going to add some sharpening this one i am really <laughs> very uh light with the sharpening because i realize you know if you bring it up to 30 that is a sharp photo. <laughs> you could see almost every wrinkle on my face and we don't want to show that. <laughs> so I'll bring it to about like a six or seven. Just so that wherever you're uploading it to, it kinda, um, what's it called? It kinda, it doesn't get super blurry. Cause you know, when you upload to Instagram, sometimes the quality goes down and stuff, you know? or it doesn't upload the way you want it to on a social media platform. Um, but yeah, now we're gonna zoom out. This is cute, okay. Bring a little bit more saturation. Nice, okay. Now I realize I should have done a before <laughs> and after photo so you could see what it looked like before. Um, so, no, one second. <laughs> Let's just, uh, duplicate it really quick so I could just show y'all the before and after. Uh, and then we're gonna go in here. Oh wait, not design. 
this turn this off oh my goodness okay and then we're just gonna open another tab and i believe it's this one that we're working on yes okay so here's the edited oh my gosh it looks it looks pretty good oh my goodness okay so this is what it looks like edited and then this is what it is without that is such a big difference before or before after before after okay cool and then of course in addition to like enhancements you can also add things like filters and stuff which we can quickly play around with so I can show y'all what the different effects look like so if we apply filters um, we'll apply it on top of the enhancement so that the photo still kind of is still the adjustments we made are still there but um, here are some of the filters that Creative Cloud Express has. So of course there's the famous duo tone. This one just changes the color of the highlights and the shadows. Um, and then you get this really cool like duo tone, you know, these, this two tone color effect, which is pretty awesome if you're using your photos for like a background or just want to add like some cool effect to it. It's really nice to use. I love using this as well. Um, and then we have a grayscale, which makes the photo gray. You can darken the photo. And then if you hit the shuffle button, um, it actually does like different layers, levels of the effect. So um, it'll darken it a little bit, then a little bit darker, then a little bit darker. So that's what, it, that's what happens when you use the um, shuffle tool. And I guess we can close this one. This one's fine. If you click here, there's the contrast. This one adjusts the contrast and stuff. So if you are not so, uh, if you are not um, experienced in photo editing or you don't want to really mess with the enhancements of a photo, these effects and filters are a great way to just make quick edits and effects to your photos. Um, so that's really fun. And then here's the lighten. is great and what's this one colorize this one's similar to duotone but this one i think keeps like the shadows relatively the same color and just adjusts the highlight color this is nice and then here's multiply wow okay so that is the basics of the filters and enhancements oh you can also add blur so if you want to blur out your photo, let's say, again, if you're using a photo as a background, this is a great tool to use just to blur it out a little bit so that the text or whatever is going to be um, the subject of your graphic is, um, what's it called? Legible. <laughs> okay, cool. So that is the photo editing feature. Now we are going to get into how to use um, design assets and stuff to... Um, add effects to your photo. Okay, so we're going to start a new project. We're going to go on Instagram post. And so we're just going to wait for it. Okay. Cool. And I noticed that there's a little, it's a little bit, the tool's a little bit slow today. Um, the team is uh, working on it as we speak. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so what's it called? Let's just refresh the page. It also could be me too, honestly. Um, but I notice sometimes when the team's doing like maintenance on Creative Cloud Express, you'll notice like, you know, it slows down a little bit, but like not too much. Um, okay. So first off we have this blank canvas and now we're going to add in another photo. Okay. Lightroom my Adobe Live folder where I prep all my images. So we're gonna do uh, work with this cup of coffee right here. And then we're just gonna add it to the background. And you know, like on Instagram, like people like to post their food and stuff on their stories, their coffee drinks, especially if there's cute latte art on it. Um, but I would like to take this photo like one step further because honestly, like 
there's so many like latte photos on Instagram and you know we want this to stand out a little more, okay? Um so the first thing we are going to do is we're going to actually utilize the design assets and overlays and filters to um edit this photo. So um the the photos already pre-edited so the lighting and stuff all good. Um, but you can edit it in the enhancements uh, panel. Um, and then to bring in some, um, what's it called? Some cool effects. We're going to go to design assets and we're going to pay attention to effect groups today as well as um, overlays and possibly um, textures. So, um, so starting off with effect groups, we're going to hit more. And so... If you've never played with effect groups before, they're kind of just like fun little, like, I don't want to say effect groups are effects. No, <laughs> that's not helpful. But like, they're like overlays um, and like textures and stuff that you, that are, that have like the blend mode applied to them so that it um, will enhance the photo is the best way I could explain it <laughs> so for example let's take like a gradient here if we click on a gradient let's just add it <coughs> did I even click on it oops let's drag it okay oh oh I'm blind it's right there okay so as you can see it applied this gradient um thing right here but it already had the multiply um blend mode Atta attached to it, applied to it, and the opacity is also already set. So all you have to do is just stretch the effect over the photo, and then it just applies it like it's a filter. And uh, why? And the reason why I, besides like adding the filters um, to the photos, the reason why I really like this is because, you know, we have a gradient here. What if I want more of like the blue side to show? If I want more of the red side, you know, like you can choose a part of the filter that you want to apply to your photo, which I think is really cool because sometimes if you apply like, you know, if you don't get that option, sometimes you don't really get the the effect or like the coloring that you want. So something like this. And then we can also like um, increase the opacity, make it more subtle. Um, you can apply like a different blend mode to it, but um, it's like optimized for whatever the effect group is. So I wouldn't mess with this too much. So if I put screen, yeah, it just makes it lighter like this it kind of just washes it out a bit which is fine you could totally like rock with this but um it'll just auto set to whatever it's supposed to be so yeah so that's effect groups in a nutshell my favorite one to use is like the plastic i think this one's cool so let's say you have like a graphic or something that's supposed to be in like a plastic bag or like shrink wrap or something i think this is a really cool effect to apply to images because it just looks like it just adds like a like a plastic touch so it'd be cool if you had like a label or something that's supposed to go inside of like a plastic bag just some ideas you know um what else there's also stone paper there's a film effect um and i think i'll be using a film effect today i think are we using a film effect today no it's not listed here. It's a different. Oh, wait, no. It might be this one. Is it this one? Yes, it is this one. We'll be using this film effect right here. So these are kind of like film burns. Um, burns. I don't think that's the right word. But these have like, these will add like um, a film effect to it. Um, and it has like these like color burns. It has like these edges right here as if you're developing film. And I think it's a nice touch as well so you just apply it like this or however you want um and then you can adjust see this one's on screen rather than multiply and then it, you can uh, adjust the opacity as well that's pretty cool okay uh, yeah i just want to show you all that was my favorite one um so we're gonna add this film frame right here and it my photo isn't the correct dimensions for it but that's okay. We can just add it to 
the top and the bottom. Just like that. Cool. And then now in design assets, we're going to go to, um, I believe it's overlays. Over okay, yes. Overlays is my favorite, I think, way to add some spice to my photos. Um, hi, Hytham. Welcome um, to the stream. Hello. Okay. Um, we are editing photos today in Creative Cloud Express. Um, so in, oh my gosh, I clicked out. <laughs> okay, so for overlays, I really love using the shadows. If you have not used the shadows yet, Y'all missing out, okay? You can add fake shadows to your photos, and I think it's probably one of the coolest things ever. Um, I still need a master, like, what kind of angles these are for, <laughs> or when to use certain angles for some of these um, overlays, but one that I use when I'm, like, if I'm, like, leaning against a wall or something is this one. And we're just going to pretend there's, like, a window or something overhead, and we're just going to line it up like so. And then we're going to just decrease the opacity like this. I think the film thing, it makes sense if it's on top, right? Yeah. Um, or we can, let's take it out for now. And so you could see, you could create like a fake shadow on your photos, which is perfect for like artsy, like photography or like product photography. I think it just, it looks so good. And you can make it as intense or or um, as subtle as you want. It just, it just looks so real. Sorry, I am easily amused by, um, by these, <laughs> uh, what's it called, overlays. Um, but yeah, so those are the windows. Okay, but today we're going to be using the plants. We're gonna pretend that there is a plant in the room with us. <laughs> um, Let's pick one that's like kind of tall, like this one. This is a palm, I think. Any plant people in the room? Okay, so this will add like a nice plant shadow. So we could pretend like, let's say we're taking this photo and then there's a plant behind us in front of a window that's like super tall. Yeah, that's, that's the vibes. <laughs> Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, this, is <laughs> this looks so good. Okay, and then we're going to go in and go back to design assets and then back to overlays. Oh, they have confetti. How fun if there was like cute little sprinkles on the, the latte. The edible sprinkles, of course. <laughs> Wait, let's see, let's see how, how it looks. I want to get something that's like realistic looking like some of these are just like dots. Oh, and some of these have like, I don't know if y'all can see it, but it has, it looks like the foil. So it just, it looks so cool. Oh my goodness. The shadow is nice. Yes, Cody. The shadows are super nice. I love adding fake shadows to my photos <laughs> sometimes on, um, on Instagram. I'm just going to make it, let's pretend that they just put some, some edible glitter on our latte. I'm just going to angle it a little bit. Oh yeah. Okay. That looks, that looks good. And then we're going to, we can adjust the lighting of design assets. So let's say it's a bit darker in the room we can like make it a tiny bit darker or we can make it lighter if like there's like direct light on it and stuff um we can add more shadows just to like try and blend it with the photo just a little bit more ah it looks so good <laughs> okay and then let's add um what's it called Let's go back and let's add some, let's go back into effect groups and then let's add back the film. Oh my gosh, this one looks so good too. All of these look really good. Okay, sometimes I just click through all the assets just to see what they look like on the photo 
and I spend so much time doing that. <laughs> and that's kind of how I pick um, what assets I want to use on streams. It's literally hours of me going through every design asset and stuff and putting things together and then just finding things that I like. <laughs> and I think that are pretty cool. Cool. So there's that. Oh my gosh, it looks pretty good. And um, then, ooh, let's adjust the photo. Should we adjust the photo? Should we add a filter? I am not sure. Maybe we can add another overlay to it. Let's see. Effect groups. Oh, wait, no. Let's go back to design assets. Overlays. Um, they have lens flares and stuff. What do they have? What do they have? Let's see. Oh, okay. I really want to do... Wait, what do they have in the film ones? Maybe we can add like a film effect. Oh, they have film dust. Let's check this out. I don't see it. Where did, where did it go? Oh, it's right here. Okay. <laughs> they have like slight film dust. And I think if I use screen, I don't know if y'all could see it. see it. It's really subtle. It's really subtle. Like little film dust and scratches and stuff. What happens if I make it screen? Oh, it makes it white. Oh my gosh. This is really cool. Okay. That'd be great to adding, um, making your photos look more filmy. Um, let's go with, let's try this one. It's feeling a little crazy. Okay, so we'll just add it like this, and then we're just going to mess around. I'm not sure what's going to happen if I, let's multiply. Okay, this happens with multiply, and this happens with screen. And if we turn it down, it adds like a little bit, it's a bit more subtle. And this one makes it darker. Kind of like it. And then when we add it to normal, it just has the regular color and you can just uh, you can just adjust the opacity like that. That's pretty cool. Okay. Cool. I think this looks pretty awesome and we did all of this with design assets <laughs> we did all this with design assets we have like the overlays we have um what's it called the effect groups applied to here we didn't we don't have any of like the filters on we don't have a filter enhancement or blur and we just completely transformed the photo in just a couple of minutes um hi andreas welcome to the stream hello Happy Friday, everybody. Hi, Tim. Um, okay, so that is how you can edit your photos using d purely design assets, um, which is a really powerful tool, and I think you should explore if you haven't done so already. Okay, you know what? Honestly, I say about everything. You should explore everything <laughs> if you haven't done so already. Um, but yes, okay, so the next thing we're going to move on to, is I'm going to need a little bit of audience participation, so feel free to start spitballing ideas, but I wanted, I did this exercise with um, our Facebook group, so if you haven't joined the Creative Cloud Express Facebook group, um, I have a link down below or in chat if a mod can help me out. Um, we, I do um, office hours in there and in the Discord server, but this past week we did kind of like a um, kind of like a photo composite like exercise or collage making exercise. Um, but <laughs> we had a question from that session um, on like if it was possible to make photo composites or like do any photo manipulation um, in Creative Cloud Express similar to like Photoshop. And while I don't think creators have the full um, power and the full capabilities of Photoshop in Creative Cloud Express, I think you can make like decent um, photo composites or collages, which is great for folks who are just starting out or who just want to make some fun collages. Um, so yes, so feel free in chat. We are going to actually make some together. I'm gonna need some ideas from y'all. Okay, so we're just gonna go back to the homepage. Let's do, I'll set up the scene 
and then in chat y'all can tell me what to add so um feel free so the scene that we're gonna do is um we're gonna make a campsite today <laughs> so using the adobe stock photo collection um which y'all have access to um we're going to search up tent so i'll just set it up and feel free to start adding stuff in chat that you want to see in our fun little collage <laughs> okay so we're going to do this um and oh yes this is a cool photo to use because we have a lot of background and um, a lot of landscape to work with so i do want to separate these two like i want to keep the sky and i want to keep the ground and the tent so we're going to duplicate it and we're going to remove the background okay so this should only take off the tent there you go take off the tent but we're going to actually brush in roughly brush in it doesn't have to be clean um the landscape just so we can have stuff like in the background if we wanted to so sweet we're just going to restore try our best i'm not even going to try with the trees in the facebook group <laughs> they wanted me to add a ladder but then like the cutout didn't turn out right so i had to like they wanted me to individually brush each ladder step <laughs> and stroke it was a wild time it was a wild time and they all made sure like i i finished it and stuff <laughs> oh man um, okay, so we are going to just add this to the background, which is the original image, and then we have the cutout right here. And then we're just going to put it here, and then just like line it up. I wonder if this is even the right size. Just as best as we can, because honestly, at this point, the background doesn't really matter too much. Um, because um what's it called we have this top layer right here okay there we go eh, roughly so and so <clears throat> oh i like where this is going yes yes i'm so excited okay so next we're going to add another photo um let's put in some like mountains in the background um let's see mountain mountains mountains something like that okay let's add this one so we're going to add this as the background of the 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 little campsite that we're making and then we're going to apply a blend mode um since it's nighttime you know the sky we don't really need so much so we're gonna do multiply to like darken it and just get rid of all of like the light colors and stuff and so it blends in with the current scene and then it's in front of everything so we're just going to take this photo and then bring it behind the the cutout layer so it's in the back and then also so the landscape part is still in the front and i do need to adjust the cutout actually because i have the sky right here so let's just, let me just erase that really quick. Boop, 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 boop. Of course, a lot of y'all talented, talented artists in the chat will do a better job than me <laughs> and get all the individual blades of grass. <laughs> but I'm just roughly doing it right now because we're also gonna start putting stuff in front of it. And so I'm not too worried about clean lines today or anything like that. Okay, cool. Have that done. And then we're just going to keep stretching it so that you can't see the fine lines. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this looks so good. Um, I like where this is going. That's actually pretty powerful. Didn't expect you could do that in CC Express. Yes, you can do. Yeah, I was surprised too. When I was honestly during the Facebook session, I was just like, let's see if we can do this. And then it did it. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> wait a minute, back up. <laughs> so let's do, I need to teach this in a master class because this is amazing. 
So let's just line it up. Okay, cool. So now we're going to add in some cool stuff. Like we need a campfire. Um, maybe we need some animals. So feel free in chat. Just tell me things to add. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll put a hiker on the mountains or something like that. I'm not sure. So let's go back into photos. Let's do the campfire. Um, campfire, campfire, bonfire. What would, which would be better? Maybe bonfire would be better because we got people in here. I mean, we can add people, but the cutout. <laughs> I'm thinking if, you know, I always, when I choose images, I always make sure, will the cutout work? <laughs> um, okay, let's remove the background and see if this works. It's a little dark, so we'll see. Nice. Okay. Well, it did it. <laughs> that surprised me. So yeah, this cutout is so clean. My goodness, the fire and all that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyways, so we're going to put a nice little campfire. And of course the lighting is a little bit different. Like we have to remember we're nighttime right now. So we need to darken it a little bit just by adding an enhancement. We'll turn down the brightness, turn down maybe the contrast a little bit and the highlights. And then we need to, oh, the warmth. This photo seems a little bit cool tone because like of the sky and stuff, it's a little bit cold. So we're going to just make it a little bit colder. And then we have our little campfire here. And then if you wanted to go the extra mile, um, you could actually just break apart this tent photo altogether and then just like have just the grass as a cutout, then just the tent and or just the sky. And then, you know, you could put the campfire like behind like the blades of grass and stuff. And I just feel like you just have so much power <laughs> just with using the remove background tool and like the refine cutout um, tool as well. Um, OK, let's add in. Uh, let's add a bear. I like the way you think. <laughs> what about from the campfire? Normally I would request a lens flare, but I don't think that would make sense here. Lens flares, there are lens flare um, overlays, which I think are pretty cool that I've used before. We need a bear. Oh, we need a standing bear. Yes, okay. Okay, remove background. Will it remove? It removed. Heck yes. <laughs> that should be like a new like segment on here, I feel like. Will the background be removed cleanly? <laughs> and most of the times it, it does. Okay, so we have our bear. And then again with the lighting, it doesn't really match too much. So we're going to, what should we do? What should we do? Enhancements. There you go. Um, and then we're just going to just make it dark. It's nighttime. So we don't, we don't need a ton of light. Let's turn down the con or not contrast highlights. Um, maybe add some shadows. We won't get the lighting completely perfect um, because, you know, it's, it's a photo, um, but we can do our best. <laughs> so the warmth, let's make it cold, a little bit cool tone. I wonder if we can make it darker even more. Oh, we could make it darker even more. Uh, let's bring down the contrast. So. Oh, it's getting there. Oh, it's getting there, y'all. Let's bring down saturation highlights. Oh, I like where this is going. Oh my gosh, a little bear in the corner. The lighting's a little off, but you know, photo selection. That's all in the photo selection part. If you want all of the, like the lighting and stuff and colors to match. Um, oh, we have a cute little bear. Okay, cool. And then what's next? What next? Wow, such a good feature. Yes, Oliver, it's awesome. How would you add glow to the fire? Oh, you could add probably in a design asset or something. There could be like some glow effects maybe. Okay, I have to be more specific. <laughs> it said you need to be specific. Um, possibly maybe like an overlay or something. Maybe, oh. Maybe something like this. This is lights. So we have this. Oh, it already. 
applied maybe like a design asset. I'm actually not sure. Maybe can can we blend it? Multiply screen. Screen would be the best one, maybe. The only thing is it has like um kind of a harsh edge on the sides. So that's like my only thing. You know what'd be cool if the refined cutout um tool brush had like a feather. I think that would be super cool if it had that. Does it have that? I don't know. Oh yeah, it doesn't have a well-defined subject. So yeah, this is not the type of photo. But if it had like a feather, feathering option, that'd be cool. Otherwise we have this like straight edge right here. Or you can find maybe a design asset or something, like something that's not like square shaped. <laughs> I don't explain it. Oh, you know, I might have an idea. I'm maybe we can use a basic shape and then turn down the opacity. No, but there's no feathering. You would have to find a design asset to make it work. You would have to find a design asset that has like slight, like feathering or something, or like a fade kind of effect to it, so you don't see like the harsh line on the outside. And I know there's some in here, but I don't want to take up the entire stream trying to find it. Um, or maybe I do. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but I'll think on it. Let me let me think on it. But I think that would be like the best way to go about it. Um, okay, let's add a raccoon. That'd be fun. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Okay. He looks so he looks like he's up to something. Okay, remove background. One tap, remove background. <laughs> this is so cute. Okay, so I kind of want so the setting for this, I want it to be like, maybe like someone's capturing a photo or something. And then I want, maybe this raccoon can be like a photo bomb or something. Um, let's turn it this way, <laughs> bring it to the corner. But, you know, I want to, <laughs> since it's so, the raccoon's so far into the foreground, we're going to blur it so that this remains like the focus and stuff. Maybe, okay, maybe a realistic size of the bear would be like here. Um, so we're going to add some blur to it <laughs> to make it look like it's like closest to the camera lens. Like, hello. What's that? <laughs> what you got there? You got any snacks? <laughs> Sorry, it cracks me up. Yes, make him go, make him bigger. The bears are eight feet tall. Okay. You know what? <laughs> there. <laughs> Here you go. I think maybe campfire can be bigger. Anything else I should add? <clears throat> yes, make him glow. Wait, what do you mean make him glow? What do you mean him? The the raccoon? Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's so cool. And then, okay, we need to change the um, the lighting on the raccoon as well, since everything's like a bit more cool toned. Brightness down. Contrast, highlight. <laughs> there are some glow assets in design assets. Overlays, lights, rays of light. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Let's let's find it. Let's continue with the alien. Okay, you want an alien, Andrea? Let's go. Um, okay, design assets, overlays, rays of light. Is it this one? This one lights. Rays of light. Yes, this one. But this is the one with the the harsh edge. So if you can find, there's um. How do you say this? This is bokeh, right? That's how you say it, bokeh? You can use these as well. Oh, spotlights. <gasps> oh, idea, idea. Oh wait, no, it has a harsh, harsh edge. If we can find one that does not have a harsh edge around it, it could totally work. Like, let's look at this blue one. Yeah, see, it needs to like not have this part. You know what I mean? And they're out there. I know they're out there somewhere. Like I just need it like on its own because these are meant to like overlay the entire photo. That's why they have like 
um, this part, the edges. So, okay. So we'll go with Andrea's alien. <laughs> alien. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the alien cracks me up. And also scary. Oh, I love this one. What other alien stuff we got? I think we have to go with the dude in the suit. <laughs> I just remove the background. <laughs> and then I'll just wait for it. Okay, we are good. Oh yeah, see, if it had like a feather. Ooh, that'd be so powerful. Okay. Um <laughs> let's put him on top right here. Little alien dude. Hello. <laughs> Let's see, we have time for a few more. If you want to put even more silly things, feel free to suggest. Um, let's turn on the brightness a little bit. He's way up in the sky, so let's let's make him a bit more cool tones. Down the highlights and the brightness and the contrast. Oh yeah, he way up there. Oh, he goes in the dark. He goes in the dark. <laughs> oh, make the raccoon an alien. How do I do? Oh, <laughs> a unicorn. Okay, let's add a unicorn. How do you make the raccoon an alien? Unicorn. Oh my goodness. Wait, this is great. Oh, that's great. This is awesome. This one's cool too. <gasps> There's just a unicorn head. <gasps> Should I put a unicorn head on the other side? Or do we want it on the background? <laughs> this is so fun. Okay, let's do... I like the unicorn head, like, photo bombing. I think that'd be... <laughs> That's a fun idea too. We can move stuff around. Oh, it took out some of the stuff. Easy peasy. Let's do that. Boom. Done. <laughs> oh my gosh. All these photo bombers. It's kind of like the campers trying to take a nice aesthetic camping photo and then all these animals pop up and like, well, what are you doing? Hello. Can I be in the photo? <laughs> Enhancements. Turn down brightness. Turn down contrast. Make it cool tones. So yeah, at this at at some point while I'm editing photos, I kind of just like bring it down to roughly where I'd usually put it. I don't really get to what's it called specific. Oh my gosh, the darker the the unicorn goes, the more like sad it looks, you know. Okay, and let's add some blur, just a little bit, because it's like the focus is supposed to be here, but it's like hello. <gasps> what if we made the focus the animals? That'd be that'd be different. Hello, I am the bear trying to get in this photo group photo <laughs> oh man antennas antennas okay let's do antennas design uh, photos will it work antenna i'm scared what i'd get in stock photos for antenna okay we have actual like technology <laughs> satellites Oh my gosh. What if I put alien? I don't I don't expect search to pop up. Of course search pops up. Okay, we still get antennas. Oh my gosh, what is this? Let's add it. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this one. Oh my goodness. Remove background. You know, what? let's just add the bug. That'd be fun. <laughs> oh i hate it i hate everything about it already oh my goodness let's just put it on there 
All right, y'all. So that brings us at time. Um, we should definitely do this again where we just create something together. I love this idea. I should make it part of the stream. That'd be great. <laughs> but that's all the time we have for today. I hope y'all got some value and inspiration from today's stream. Uh, or masterclass. Um, and if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to myself or the community on Creative Cloud Express, uh, Express Facebook, Discord, and on social media. Um, and also don't forget to subscribe to the Creative Cloud Express YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Um, and if you want more content just like this. And yeah, so with that, thank you so much for watching today's class and I will see you all in the next one. All right, bye. Have a good weekend, y'all. <laughs>